Hi, I'm Steve from Silver Screen Services. Hi. Bit difficult with the mask on. Let's try again. Hi, I'm Steve from Silver Screen Services. I'm here to talk to you about minibus transport for media productions. Many of you will be familiar with this kind of vehicle behind me. The standard workhorse for media productions. 16 seat minibus. Many productions use these workhorses to transport their crew and their supporting artists to and from set. What I'm going to talk to you about refers to all passenger vehicles of between 9 and 16 seats. If you hire a minibus like this, it must be operated under a public service vehicle operator's license or a PSV operator's license, O license. Now, that's not voluntary or optional or a suggestion. That's mandatory. It's the law. But how do you know if the vehicle is licensed? It's dead simple to find out. I'm going to show you how. Let's take a look at the windscreen of the minibus. The law states that if you are operating a minibus with nine or more passenger seats for hire and reward, you must possess a PSV operator's license. And most importantly, you must display the PSV O license disc in the windscreen of your vehicle. Here's ours. This disc shows the entity of the operator running the vehicles. We are Stark Creations trading as Silver Screen Services. The disc is dated to show its validity. It also has the unique number for the operator's license. And indeed the disc has its own unique number in order to prevent fraud. These discs come in two colors. Ours is a grass green color, but you can also get a sky blue one. The grass green color indicates that we can operate internationally, we can go into Europe. If you have a sky blue one, you can only operate legally within the United Kingdom. Any passenger can check that the vehicle is valid, that it has an O license in the windscreen. It just takes seconds. A second check you can undertake is to look for the legal lettering on the side of the vehicle. The entity of the legal lettering should match the O license. Here's ours, Stark Creations, trading as Silver Screen Services. It matches the disc. So we've checked the minibus has the required license to operate, but what about the driver? Let me introduce you to Nigel. By law, Nigel had to pass a special driving test to obtain his category D or D1 entitlement, which qualifies him to drive this passenger vehicle for hire and reward. Nigel has also had to pass his driver CPC or Certificate of Professional Competence and he must carry his driver qualification card to demonstrate that he's passed this extra test. Can we see those licenses please Nigel? So here is a professional minibus driver's driving licence. Looks pretty much the same as everyone else's. You have to look at the back to see the special qualifications. Here, you can see the driver has passed his test for both category D and D1 vehicles. Category D1 is minibuses like this. Category D is for full-size buses or coaches. The thing you must check for is any codes by the category of vehicles showing an entitlement to drive. The really important one to check for is code 101. It's easy to remember, just think of that TV programme, Room 101 or George Orwell's 1984. If you see a code 101, it's the worst thing in the world it means that your driver is not entitled to drive you. He has not passed a category D or D1 test. But this driver has it. What does it mean? 
It's really easy to find out what the codes on anyone's driving license mean. Just go to www.gov.uk forward slash driving hyphen license hyphen codes. Let's scroll to find the dreaded 101. There we go. Not for hire and reward, or in other words, not for profit, not commercially. Uh-oh, surely that means our driver can't carry your crew. But let's take another look at the licence. Aha! The code 101 was by the minibus, but it's not by the full-size bus or coach. That means the category D entitlement overrules, supersedes the category D1 entitlement. This driver can legally drive your crew as he has passed the right driving test. The coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic has made us all think how we're going to return to work safely. It's spread through aerosol expression and through surface contamination. So let's have a look at how Silver Screen Services have put in measures and procedures to minimise the transmission risk. First and foremost, our driving team have been issued with masks and gloves. They're the winter ones, Nigel. The first thing you're going to notice as you board our minibus is the aerosol suppression screen we have installed. This is here for the protection of both our driving team and passengers, helping to stop airborne transmission of infected bodily fluids. Specially designed and manufactured to adhere to regulations regarding vehicle modification, it has been ratified by our insurance company as being a suitable and safe modification for this purpose. It won't shatter on impact and in a dire emergency could easily be ripped out if access was required through or over the seats. Notably, it doesn't prevent access to the vehicle fire extinguisher. We might also advise keeping the windows open wherever possible to keep fresh air circulating. Social distancing is difficult in the enclosed passenger cabin of a minibus. Not using the front seats next to the driver reduces the capacity of this vehicle to 14 passengers maximum. But, dependent on current government advice and the policy adopted by your production company, I want to demonstrate the maximum number of passengers that could be carried under different social distancing scenarios. If two metres social distancing is required, then only three passengers can be carried. At one metre social distancing, that capacity increases to six passengers. If social distancing measures are not as important, we could carry up to the maximum of 14 passengers. Vehicles are sanitised on a regular basis with proprietary antiviral cleaning solutions. So we've looked at the operator's licence disc in the front windscreen and we've checked out what's called the legal lettering on the side of the vehicle, denoting which entity is operating this service. But you can delve a little deeper. You can check out legitimate operators online to ensure all their credentials are correct and that the licence they hold is still valid and current. To do this, visit www.gov.uk forward slash find hyphen vehicle hyphen operators. You can check for a legal licensed operator using a number of search terms. Address, business name, license number or person's name or even just a geographical area search. When you see the operator you are searching for, click on their link to find out more information. Lots of valuable info here. But what this doesn't show is how many vehicles they can operate at any one time. You need to see their actual paper operator's license. As you can see here, 
This full certificate for our operator's licence shows plenty of information about our legality. I think the most pertinent piece of information that can be garnered from this certificate is how many vehicles can be on the road at any one time. It is the authorised box that's important. We cannot supply your production company more than five vehicles from our own fleet at any one time. If you require more minibuses than that, we would have to subcontract to another legitimate supplier. The insurance certificate must make reference to hire and reward, as this is the specific type of insurance required to match an operator's licence. Any minibuses used on the public road have to have a current MOT. Because the minibuses hired by your production must be PSVs, they must also have a special PSV MOT. A Class 5 MOT will not be sufficient. Have you ever heard of the phrase duty of care? It emanates from the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974. That means that by law in the UK, every employer must show a duty of care towards every employee. So the production company must look after all the people it engages to make a piece of media. In addition, each employee must show a duty of care to their fellow employees. The bottom line is, we should all be doing our work in a safe and most importantly, a legal environment to make sure that happens. If we see something that isn't safe or isn't legal, we should be doing something about it.